In this video, I'm going to walk through how mission pads work with both TelloEDU and TelloTalent. Now, the code I've constructed here is specific to TelloTalent. You'll notice some of the LED blocks when mission pads are detected, but you can certainly do this with TelloEDU. Perhaps if a pad is detected, you can do a certain flip or yaw in a specific direction. Now, in the desktop app, we recently added mission pad support. We'll be bringing this to mobile apps uh, very soon. So let me go ahead and walk through the blocks on the canvas, and then I'll do a live demonstration. First off, you'll notice that the mission pad blocks are on the left. We'll cover uh, pretty much all of these, all the way down to the XYZ block, and I'll follow up with a tutorial on how to use uh, the jump block. This is a really exciting feature that allows you to uh, reposition Tello and orient it around a different mission pad. If you're not familiar with the benefit of mission pads, you may know that Tello does its best to try and maintain position and uh, calculate distances in real time uh, using its vision sensors. Uh, mission pads allow uh, Tello to actually reorient itself around a specific pad to give you a greater accuracy as you're carrying out your flights. So we'll start off with a simple takeoff block. I have a delay there just so I could get over and film a Tello while the mission was happening. We want to enable mission pads and then we have the option to set downward or forward or both a detection direction. Downward and forward was necessary in my case because I had a mission pad pointed forward that Tello could see through its standard camera, and then I had one uh, pointed down below so Tello could detect it beneath the drone. That's a pretty cool capability, being able to specify what direction you would like to do your detection. Uh, we're big fans of downward detection, but forward is very cool because it allows for some interesting applications. You'll notice that after I take off, I have to reposition Tello so that the mission pad is within the forward camera view. So that's why I fly up and then fly forward. And then once it detects it, it sets the pad to uh, the pad number variable. So we have this get pad ID that currently will get the pad number that Tello sees. If Tello does not see a pad, which I'll demonstrate here in a minute, you'll notice that it will say minus one. That's the default uh, pad number when Tello does not detect something. Then we'll print the pad that we see. If the pad number is three, we'll do some cool little LED uh, display. I'll pulse it, then I'll actually uh, display a three on the matrix. I went ahead and just, you can go in here and specify the different colors that you want to draw on the matrix LED. We'll hover for five seconds. I'll then reset the top LED color to black or essentially turn it off. We'll turn around and then navigate towards the next mission pad. And as you're laying out your mission pad environment, I want to give a little bit further detail of how this works. Obviously, Tello needs to be in the vicinity of the mission pad for it to detect it and then either reposition itself or make a decision based on your code when it sees the pad. Each pad has a rocket which specifies the forward orientation. And when you get into learning how to use the jump block, you can tell it to yaw a certain angle based on this uh, forward position, which represents zero degrees. As you're likely aware, there are four mission pads. Each pad has a number on each side. So this talks a little bit about the coordinate frame here, very similar to what you may be familiar with already. As if Tello just takes off, you have the positive X being forward, the positive Y being left, positive Z being up. And finally, let me show you uh, just the visibility range, the detection range uh, that Tello has to be able to uh, detect a pad. So you can see there's about a meter square as well as uh, 1.2 meters tall. This is a very similar range to what you'll find when using forward detection as well. So back to uh, the rest of our mission. So once we reposition ourselves, we'll hover just to give Tello time to see the pad. You'll find that it does 
in some cases take a couple of seconds for Tello to notice a pad when it's over it. So make sure that you add the necessary delay. We'll set the pad number. We'll print uh, whether or not we found uh, that pad. In this case, if the pad is eight, we'll do a little LED pulse on top. We'll display number eight, and then we'll use this fly to XYZ of the pad. And what this does is that it tells Tello we're going to go to the X and Y of zero. So that will be closely to centered over the top of the pad. And then we'll lower ourselves 20 inches above pad number eight. And then finally we'll land. And we have an alternate path here in this else statement. I'll zoom out a little bit. And you'll notice that if the pad number of three isn't detected at the very beginning of the mission, then we'll fall into this L statement. We'll pulse the color red on the top LED. That'll tell us Tello was not able to find that pad and then it will land. Let's go ahead and look at this mission in action. Tello is connected. You'll notice telemetry streaming in the top right. Our mission pad is currently minus one because nothing is detected. I've launched the mission after a five second delay. Tello will take off. In the top right, we have Tello's view. In the bottom right, we have the view from my phone as I'm recording Tello during its mission. Notice how Mission Pad 3 is in the camera view. In the top right, we have detection of Mission Pad 3. The LED is now pulsing, indicating that it sees the mission pad. As Tello turns around, you'll see number three on the matrix display. Now we'll do a couple of movement commands that will reposition us over mission pad number eight. We'll fly down 20 inches and then delay for five seconds so that mission pad eight can now be detected. We display it on the matrix LED. We pulse the LED on top. We reposition Tello over the mission pad and then land. That was a overview of how mission pads work in the DroneBlocks desktop app. Now I encourage you to uh, do a basic test. So I'll create a new mission. We'll take off. We'll go to the mission pad category and let's go ahead and enable mission pads. Let's set the detection to downward. And in this scenario, make sure that you set Tello over a mission pad of your choice. Let's say in our case, it's going to be a mission pad number five then do something simple as we're going to fly to X of 50. So that'll be 50 inches in front of the mission pad, 50 inches to the left, and then 50 inches above pad number five. Then follow up with another fly block. We'll go to zero, zero. So that will bring Tello back to the center of the mission pad above it. Let's decrease altitude to 30 inches and then finally land. And what you'll find with both Tello Talent and Tello EDU is uh, the accuracy is, is pretty good. Let me actually change that to five. So now you'll take off, enable mission pad detection, fly away from the pad, back to it, and then land. I hope this video was helpful. Coming soon, we'll be doing uh, some more interesting advanced demonstrations with the Jump to Mission Pad block, and that allows for a lot more flexibility. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video.